Hello everyone, it's such a beautiful day in St. Helena Bay and we're so blessed with all the flowers. It's starting to, to go down now, but it's still beautiful. And um, we're really blessed in this place where we live. Um, it seems as if we're getting to the end, seeing that we've changed to phase one. So I'm, I'm really excited. Um, on the first, the first weekend of, of October, we will have our first service back in the church and our community church service will be at 11 o'clock like it used to be. Um, so please come along and come and join us for the community service. We're looking forward to that. Um, everyone is very excited. So the first weekend of uh, October, we'll have our normal services back again. Isn't that great? Okay. Now let's be quiet and let's turn to the Lord and uh, it is my prayer that He will touch you. Lord, thank You that we can turn to You and know that You are here and You are our God and that You are always with us. Thank You, Lord, that You live in our hearts and thank You that You fill us with Your love and Your goodness. And I pray now, Lord, that You would touch us and that You would, and that you would learn us, teach us in this morning. Thank You, Lord, that, that we can turn to You. I pray for everyone who needs you this morning. Lord, please make them aware of your presence. Please bless us now in your word as we read it, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we are going to read from Philippians. Philippians chapter 1, and it is a letter that Paul writes to the, uh, the congregation or the parish of the, of the Philippians. And uh, it's to thank them. So I'm going to read from verse 3, Philippians 1 verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. For whether I am in chains or defending the confer the, and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit and righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise. Of God. We will read up to there. Um, now, as I said, we've changed to phase one um, of the COVID pandemic, and uh, and it excites us because it's been a it's been a horrific year, 2020. Um, we've been through difficult times, even in our congregation. Um, the COVID-19 virus uh, um, didn't leave us alone. And uh, we lost our dear sister of the clinic, um, Beth to the, to the to the virus. And uh, we still pray for Fani, her husband. Um, it's been a difficult time. We've had some unrest in our community. Um, we've had some we've had some quarrels and bad times and fight, infighting. And uh, on top of that, we've had some economical hardship. In, in our community. But above all of that, I am glad about you and I'm excited about all of you. Um, like Paul, um, I'm excited about the community and the congregation of St. Helena Bay. And uh, Paul says he has a reason why he thanks the Lord with joy for his people in Philippians. He says it's because they carry on and uh, let me read it to you.
because you're in partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. You keep on proclaiming the, the gospel, is what Paul says. You keep on proclaiming the, the gospel, preaching the gospel, living it in unison, reconciled together in union. Now you would say to me, but how did we preach the gospel? How did we carry on proclaiming the gospel? Um, you did not preach, did you? I mean, I was the only one who preached around here as far as I know, and uh, on this little videos, and that's it. How did I preach? Where? To proclaim the gospel is not a, it's not a verbal thing. You don't just preach it. It's not just verbal. It's much more than verbal. It's especially in what you do and how you do it and in the good deeds that you do. And didn't we do good deeds? In St. Helena Bay we've, uh, we've been vigilant with the food parcels and the soup kitchens and giving, giving to people in need, giving food, giving clothes and even supporting the, the, the ones that, lose their, that lost their jobs um, through the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, now we even, we even helped with cash, some people. Isn't that fantastic? That's what happened here in St. Helena Bay. You proclaim the gospel by doing good deeds. And that's what Paul thanks the Lord for, and, and so do I. I thank the Lord for the people of St. Helena Bay. Um, you cared and you did good and that is proclaiming the gospel it happened here and you did it in unison united even when we had the unrest and the tires burnt people climbed over the tires and we spoke about the problem and got to the end of it yes we reconciled and in unison we did this um, defending and confirming the gospel, says Paul. We did that. What is this gospel that Paul's talking about? What is it that we are proclaiming? Now mostly we think of it in an evangelical way by going on some missionary trip and uh, proclaiming the gospel by starting a church and start preaching. But it's much more than that. It's much more than just verbal talking. This gospel that we are talking of is a message that states that you belong to the Lord. I wish I can let you hear some of the uh, responses I got from people for whom we cared in this difficult time how they spoke of us as people of the Lord, people who belong to God. So that's who we are. We belong to the Lord. We believe that we have been bought on the cross by Jesus Christ with His blood, saved, and that He rose and gave us everlasting life. We belong to Him. We are His. We are His people. That's who we are. And that's what we proclaim. When we give someone a food parcel, that is what you are saying. You are saying, I am someone who belongs to the Lord. And you've done that here in St. Helena Bay. You also proclaim that He is with you. That this Lord is right here. You are His hands and feet. You have His Spirit in your heart. And you proclaim the Spirit by just being there for other people. They see the Lord. They experience Him because His Spirit is in you. And they can see it by the, the fruits of the Spirit, the love and the caring. And, and uh, how, how, you, how you help people. Paul says... It's because we all have 
We, we all share in God's grace. It's certainly not because of ourselves. It's, it's His grace that does that. It's, it's, we don't deserve it. He does it in us. And therefore Paul says, um, prays that he would carry on with that. And he believes that it will carry on. He does it in you and he will continue doing it in us. And he prays for that. And so do I. I pray that when we come to the end of this pandemic and when we start normally again, probably here in October, that uh, we would not forget. That we would carry on with this loving heart and this caring way of living that we've done now during this crisis that we've had. Please, carry on. And I pray the Lord that He would, that he would fill your hearts with the Spirit and continue doing that. But Paul says there's something else that he prays for as well. And I think this is probably where we have to turn our minds to. He wants us to become better. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and in depth of insight. He wants us to improve. You see, we are like a, a radio that you tune into the station. And as you get close to the station, you can hear what the people are saying, but there's still this uh, sound in between. You need to get fine-tuned. And this is Paul's prayer, that we would be fine-tuned, that we would get depth of insight, that we would feel, feel the need, really feel it, what it's all about. And maybe I should spell it out to you so that you can understand what Paul means. Uh, that we should touch each other in a way where we, where we regard the other one's pain and misery and, and the things that, that hurt you. Um, you see that very often. When someone is tired, uh, then his, his, um, his temperament is different. Not so. So don't, don't anger him. He's tired. But you must feel it, you must understand it, that he's tired. Or maybe he's, he's, uh, he lost someone dear and his heart is aching. When you have an aching heart, um, you have to be soft with people. But you have to feel it, you have to have the insight to understand that. Be fine-tuned into other people to know what's the real problem and help them. In our community we've had some people being angry. There was quite a bit of anger in our community. Um, then don't choose sides. Don't, don't judge. Please don't judge. Tune in and understand why. Get to the depth of it. There's many people in this community, and I know many of them, who have some kind of pain that was inflicted upon them in the past. Don't don't tread on them. Please don't. These are people with a lot of hurt. But you have to have the fine-tuned insight, says Paul, to know it. So come with your goodness, but come softly. Come with the open arms of the Lord and care with His love and look out for people. And have insight into what it's all really about. You have to discern, it says. You have to discern what it's really about. It's really about love and about unity and about caring. The passage that we've read comes to end about the, and says that this will happen till Jesus comes, till the day of Christ Jesus, it says. Um, He's coming. He's coming. And uh, it is my prayer that this congregation and this community and if everyone who's listening to this message, that the Lord will fill your heart with His Spirit, with His goodness, His good message, the Evangelion, the Gospel, so that people will see the goodness, will understand the Gospel. And I pray the Lord that He will fill you, tune you finely, so that you will have the insight how to handle every person on what it's really about, till He comes. 
May the good Lord bless you. Amen. Lord, thank you that we can hear your message. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we can be glad with Paul, full of joy, because you've brought us through those difficult times and you've lifted us up and you've, and you've taught us to care, to bring the gospel. Lord, I pray now that you would continue this good work and that you would tune us finally to have the right insight till you come. I pray this in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen.